الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless him and bless all the messengers of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and bless all the companions of each one of the messengers and may he make us from amongst those who can be in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the life after death. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all steadfast and grant protection to ourselves and our offspring, those to come up to the day of Qiyamah. Ameen. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, one of the important pillars of Islam is the pillar of zakah and the issue of charities in Islam. In Islam, there are several types of charities. The first type of charity is that which is compulsory. So the term charity in the English language has the meaning of the fact that it is voluntary. Whereas when it comes to zakat, it is not voluntary. So that is the difference. And if we were to say a tax, then that too would not be accurate. Because how can you term zakat as being taxed? Allahu Akbar. So therefore, there is no one word translation for the word zakat. But I'm sure we all know what we refer to when we say zakat. Also, we need to realize and understand that when we speak of charities in the Sharia, we are speaking about the voluntary charities known as sadaqat, over and above the zakat. That is something that someone would like to give. In some places, they call it a lillah, which means for the sake of Allah. Sometimes we have another type of a charity which is to be given known as a kafara in order to uh, compensate for a sin that may have been committed or for some deed that one may not have engaged in there is something known as a kafara then there is something known as a fidya something known as a fitra all these are monetary acts of worship by giving and donating may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from amongst those whose charities are acceptable if someone has no wealth at all, Allah says, they are not from amongst those who cannot give a charity because to smile at the face of your fellow Muslim is also a sadaqa. And I see, mashallah, a lot of us are smiling here. So every one of us, we are engaging in an act of charity and worship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. Also, to say a good word is an act of charity. It is actually equated to something better than a monetary donation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, A good word that is uttered from the mouth. And forgiveness, when you forgive someone, forgiving people is better than a charity that one gives and after that brags about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from bragging. Inshallah, we will get to that a little bit later in tonight's topic. So the first issue that is discussed in the Quran regarding zakat is the fact that Allah has instructed us to fulfill zakat. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Establish your prayer and give out alms to the poor, which are these acts of charity to the poor. And Allah says, whatever you have put forth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see it intact and you will see it multiplied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next issue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about is the fact that charities actually act as a cleanser to cleanse ourselves. We cleanse our wealth, we cleanse our bodies, 
we cleanse even our fortune. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So if someone is a person who has had bad luck, it is time they started dishing out charities and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will convert that bad fortune into good fortune. In Surah Al-Layl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever gives from the wealth that they have been granted, and they are from amongst those who believe, Allah says, we will make easy for them the path of goodness. So when they tread a path, it will naturally be the path of goodness. They will have good fortune come in their direction. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those. The hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, as tutfi'u al-bala, which means the acts of charity will extinguish calamity that was coming in your direction. So if there is a calamity coming in your direction, an act of charity will actually extinguish it. And this is why we are taught, before you undertake a journey, give out a little bit of a charity. Before you do something, give out a charity. Before you enter your examination room, give out a charity. Before you want to do something important, give out a charity. These are sadaqat. And this is not just a tale of the old and a, a folk tale. No, it is a reality. Rather than saying, Ya Allah, if I pass my exam, I will give a charity of a hundred rands. No. We can't do play that game with the Creator. No, we'd rather say, here is the hundred rand, I've given it as a charity, and Ya Allah, make me pass. Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are not stingy and those who don't treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though he is a little child. May Allah protect us. Because I've given this example in the past, a little child, you say, come here, come here, I'll give you a sweet, I'll give you a sweet. And sometimes you want to mispronounce it purposely to entice the child. I give you a fuiti, subhanallah. <laughs> you mispronounce it intentionally to try and lure the child. And then when the child comes, you put the sweet in your pocket and say, I caught you. What will happen? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like that. You say, Allah, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid O people, you are the ones who are in need of Allah. He doesn't need anything from you. He is absolutely independent. So let us never try and promise Allah that if this happens, then this will happen. Do it and then inshallah expect the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah At-Tawbah, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah says, take from their wealth a charity that will cleanse them and that will purify them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This verse teaches us that charity is a means of cleansing ourselves, insha'Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He is the one who accepts the charity. So that is why don't brag and boast about it, but rather do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Surah At-Tawbah as well. Alam ya'lamu anna Allah huwa yaqbalu at-tawbata an ibadih. Do they not see that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who accepts repentance? He is the sole owner of acceptance of repentance. When you seek forgiveness, it's Allah who will forgive you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. And when you give out charities, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately who will decide whether that charity is acceptable or not. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us about the type of wealth we should be spending and when we should be spending. One is the compulsory charity, we know that. The other is, Allah says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ مَاذَا يُنْفِقُونَ قُلِ الْعَفُو They ask you, what should we spend? Tell them, spend from the excess, from that which you have which is more. الْعَفُو الْفَضْلُ That which is more, that which is excess. So, what is your dire necessity? You don't have to spend from it. A man, for example, has water that he is drinking, he needs it, he doesn't have any more. It will be part of goodness to give it out, but he doesn't have to. It will actually be over and above a charity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. 
that was a quality of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةٍ They used to give others preference over themselves even if they needed the item. Allahu Akbar. With us, things that we don't need, we are being asked to give them away. Not things we need. Have we ever thought of it? Allahu Akbar. And still, we find ourselves stingy. We find ourselves clinging. We find ourselves selfish. We don't want to share. The children from a young age don't even want to share their toys. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Maryam about Ismail alayhi salam and the lesson is for all of us. وَكَانَ يَأْمُوا أَهْلَهُ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ وَكَانَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ مَرْضِيًّا one of the reasons why he became pleased or he became pleased with Allah and Allah became pleased with him is because he used to instruct his family and children to fulfill salah and to give out charities, to give out zakah, not to be stingy. So if we want also the happiness of Allah and the pleasure of Allah, we want Allah to be happy with us, we need to start, in, start instructing our little babies and our little children to share their toys, to share their clothes, to share their their food and so on. Let them give with their own hands things away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the nation that can be giving and not from those who only receive always. Rather we receive the blessings of the people, the dua that the people make for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us such acceptance that without us even knowing thousands of people across the globe can be making dua for us. Ameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after that, who should you be spending on first? Yes, the needy. But the needy from amongst who? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَا أَنفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ Say, if you are going to spend goodness, you should start off first with your own family members. Your parents, you should start off thereafter with your relatives and look at the circle as it broadens, then the ones who are more in need than the ones who are less in need. So an orphan child is much more in need than a child who's got the parents. And Allah says, a person who's a wayfarer, who's lost his way or who, who is stuck in a town or a city and cannot go to the next city, they are also more deserving than someone who is in their own home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Remember one thing, when it comes to people that you, it is under your authority to look after them, people who fall under your authority in the Sharia, it is haram to give them zakat. We are not allowed to give our own children zakat. We are not allowed to give those directly above us or beneath us zakat. But when it comes to charities and excess wealth, charity begins at home. You start at home. You give goodness to your parents. Remember your parents always. Even if it's just a token amount or even if it's a gift. You live far from your parents, take a small gift. Mom, I've brought this for you. My dad, I've brought this for you. Subhanallah, it is the thought that counts. That's what it is. And I think let us try and liven this up. Even if it is a little pin. Even if it is a little gift, a small thing that they love, they like, something minor. You say, look, I brought this for you. Subhanallah. We ask Allah to make us conscious of our own parents because before we know, they will be gone. In fact, even after they are gone, we can forward charities on their behalf. We can give charities and say, Ya Allah, this is for your sake, but I'd like the reward to go to my deceased parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness, inshallah, in such a manner that when we grow old, our children can do the same for us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about when to spend. Allah says, spend at times of ease and at times of difficult. Everyone should spend whatever they can. Times of difficulty, times of ease. Spend. Sometimes zakat is not compulsory on you, but you can still give out wealth. A poor person can still give out wealth. If he only has a hundred rands, surely he can give out one rand from that hundred or fifty cents. Or if he only has a, a one loaf of bread, surely he can give out a slice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those whom even if zakat is not compulsory on us, we can actually give out. And this is directed at those whom zakat is not farad upon. Let us please understand that take from your wealth, share with your neighbors, share with others, give others, and you will see the doors of sustenance opening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ 
والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين Three qualities of goodness that Allah loves. What are they? Those who spend their wealth at times of ease and at times of difficulty, they don't fear poverty, they continue spending. That's the first person whom Allah loves and Allah calls them full of goodness. The second, those whom when they have a temper, they are very upset, they are becoming very angry, they swallow and extinguish that temper. They literally drink it down and they make sure that they have not vented it. Allah says they are very, very good people. Allah says, I love them. Subhanallah. So if you want to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next time you're getting hot and angry, especially in the afternoon of the month of Ramadan when the belly is calling, what you need to do, drink that anger for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will love you in return. Believe me, you will see the points of mercy before the day ends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. And may he grant us every form of goodness. And the third quality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who forgive people. Those who forgive people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. But remember, and I have mentioned this before, if that forgiveness is once, twice, thrice for the same thing, you need to start asking yourself, am I forgiving this person a little bit too many times because I might just be promoting the evil that they are engaged in. So more than two, three times, you then need to take a new course of action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. Look at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They beat him up. They did so many things. They made the blessed droplets of blood reach the ground. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And may Allah elevate the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never retaliated. Until one day when it became too much, what he did? He prepared an army to fight back. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding and protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that what is it that you are supposed to be doing with your wealth? When I've given you money, when I've given you wealth, when I've given you blessings, when I've given you a large livelihood, what is the main aim of that? Allah tells Qarun and that message to Qarun, it applies to every single one of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in Surah Qasas. Allah says to Qarun, and the message is for all of us, myself included and yourselves, that use the wealth that Allah has given you to gain and to earn and to buy your life after death, your akhirah. So I'd like to earn Jannah. I want to buy my Jannah, my wealth. Whenever I have it, I must think to myself, let me use it in a way that will be beneficial after I die. That's the way. That's what a Muslim should say. I've got some money in my pocket. Yes, I'm going to do good things with it. I don't want to do bad things. And if I do good things, let me keep a portion of it for charity. Even the voluntary charities, may Allah make us from those who give. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions another quality. He says, firstly, you should learn to buy your akhirah with the wealth you have. Learn to invest in the huge investment that there is to get your palace in the akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And Allah says, that doesn't mean you must forget the portion of the dunya. You are allowed to live in a little bit of comfort in the sense that you can buy whatever you can afford. If you can afford a lovely vehicle which is comfortable, a beautiful five-star home, there is nothing wrong in buying that. For as long as you haven't stolen the money, you haven't cheated, you haven't cheated anybody, and at the same time, you've been a decent person. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't forget your portion in the dunya. Because some people think that, no, we must divorce ourselves from this dunya. No. If you can afford it, you're allowed to have the best of the dunya, but without arrogance, without haughtiness, without cheating and stealing, without deceiving people and what have you. You're allowed to ride the best of vehicles and have the best house and you're allowed to wear the best of clothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that which is haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and listen, Qarun, we've given you a lot. So don't ever spread corruption on earth with the money we've given you. That lesson is for all of us. Don't ever spread corruption on the earth because what happens when a person has a lot of wealth 
at one stage what happens is it becomes it becomes a point of domination control they want to have their say they want to have it their way because now they've got enough they can retire forever and ever may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us we should not be from amongst those we don't want to join the ranks of qarun and haman and fir'aun on the on the day of qiyamah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Qarun and we've learned a lesson because Allah says, I don't like those who spread corruption. And this is why in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who spend. He says, don't nullify your charity. The question arises, how can a person nullify a charity? Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil man other or you who believe do not nullify your charities by bragging about the charity and by harming people or by engaging in haughtiness after you've given a charity remember one thing common sense if you give a charity and you expect that man that to become subservient to your command that was not a charity you were paying them in lieu of a service which they were providing you remember that you gave money to the masjid and you want the masjid to do what you say that was not a charity you paid them to do something for you that's what happened you are paying them for a service they are providing you so they will provide you the service you've given them the money Allah says we will not count that as a charity a charity is such that when you give it you only want Allah to know and you smile thanking Allah to give you the opportunity to have given that wealth Subhanallah, what a powerful deen, what a powerful message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got for all of us. And the issue of bragging, whenever we've given something, try never to talk about it unless you really have to. And when you have to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the same surah, if people get to know about your charity and if you have to make it apparent to people there's no problem for as long as you are sincere for the sake of Allah so if people get to know of your charity, say for example, sometimes it is, it is sometimes called for that people know that you've given so that they too can give. When they say you've given, they say let us also give. That's okay. It happened at the time of the Prophet wasallam as well. But Allah continues in that verse to say, however, if you are to hide it and give it to the poor without even your left hand knowing what your right hand has spent, then it's even better for you. Allah says, Allah knows your deed. And the fact that He knows it's enough, He will grant you in return. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls this charity. He calls it a means of forgiveness for your sins. Yukaffiru ankum min sayyatikum. Allah says, He will forgive your sins. He's watched it. He's seen it. What do we want by giving charities? Don't we want to earn closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We want forgiveness for our sins. That is how you achieve it. And this is why there are certain sins. When they are committed, there is something known as a kafara. That kafara can include, it is like a compensation. It will not absolve you of the crime. You need to engage in tawbah as well. But together with that, you need to give something. Sometimes it is a, a, a monetary act of worship you need to engage in so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can look at it, accept it and forgive you in return. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly in the Quran, that we should be spending according to our capacity. In Surah Al Talaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about spending on your own spouse and spending on your family members. And spending in any good cause, Allah says everyone should spend according to their capacity. So a wife cannot come and tell the husband, look, I need a house like the next door people. Because she needs to consider the pocket of her husband. And if there's more than one wife for the same husband, she needs to consider the fact that this man has two or three wives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us 
and may he grant us a deep understanding so whatever you have spend from it do not be miserly there are some people may allah protect us who have a lot but they cannot spend in the house they are stingy they hold they keep it to themselves and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us Allah says destruction be upon the one who gathers the wealth and amasses it and counts it every day he's counting his money puts it back the next day he's checking his balance and he is happy he's smiling the following day he's looking at it and he's wealthy and he's happy and he doesn't even spend from it Allah is cursing such people Allah says this person thinks that they are going to live forever. They don't even want to spend. Allah says, nay, they are not going to live forever. They are going to die. And if they die without having spent it, they will suffer a loss. And they may even be thrown into Jahannam if they haven't given their zakat. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us generous. One very vivid description, and there are many of them in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what exactly happens to the wealth when you give it. Allah says, وَمَا آتَيْتُم مِّن زَكَاةٍ تُرِيدُونَ وَجَهَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُضْعِفُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when you give out zakat intending the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that is what he, he multiplies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies what we give in charity if we give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the verse just before that or the first part of the verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا آتَيْتُم مِّن رِبًا لِيَرْبُوا فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ when you give people a loan wanting interest in return it will never grow in the eyes of Allah it is haram but when you give Allah a loan Allah calls it a loan Allah says when you give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a loan he will multiply it for you not only 100% even beyond to 700% and Allah says over and above that he will forgive you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as business with him. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَن تَبُورُ Allah says, definitely, those who believe, those who spend their wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who establish their salah and their zakah, those who are spending their monies more so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they have engaged in a business that they will never suffer a loss in. There's never a loss. Imagine if someone tells you, look, invest your money here, you will get 100% returns immediately. I think we would all be looking for that. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that to us, for some reason, we find ourselves still scratching our heads. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can give. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really accept it from us as well. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how some people are cursed because when they are asked for something minor that does not really require any effort from them, they still deny. There's a whole surah called Surah Al Ma'un, and Allah says at the end of it, Describing such people whom he doesn't like. Allah says, وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ Destruction be upon those whom, when they are asked for something small, which doesn't even require much from them, they deny. Someone says, can I use your pen please? And you just say, no, I don't want. And you are standing there, you are waiting there, there's nothing wrong, you don't have a very expensive pen that you are fearing is going to steal, and so on, and you, he doesn't look like a thief to you, and you still deny, for what? Allah says, why? Tomorrow you will be in need of something then. May Allah protect us all. We would like others to help us as well. You are desperately in need. Sorry sir, what's the time? Someone says. He says, listen. Ah, it's okay. Don't want to tell you. What type is that? May Allah protect us. 
You look at your clock and you look at the brother and say, I don't want to tell you. For what? He asks you, what's the time? Give him the time. And for heaven's sake, don't lie. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all, inshallah, every form of goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about how charities actually results in the mercy of Allah descending upon an individual. Allah says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ In Surah Al-A'raf, we read the verses tonight. فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, my mercy is broader than everything. No sin is too big for me to forgive. My mercy is written for certain specific people more than others. And who are those? They are those who are conscious of Allah and those who give out charities. A person who is conscious of Allah and gives out charities, Allah says, my mercy will be upon them before all the others. Yet Allah says, wa rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. My mercy is broader than everything. It encompasses absolutely everything. Nobody, no matter what sin they've committed, should ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the golden rule. If you repent, if you are sincere, and if you admit your sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you when you promise that you won't do it again. Then if, if for some reason you happen to repeat it out of human weakness, without having planned and calculated that sin at the time of seeking forgiveness, then Allah will forgive you again and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all every form of goodness and may He forgive us. May He keep us hopeful. Remember, if we say, Oh Allah, forgive me. We are forgiven. We get up from there as clean as the day we were born. So this is something we need to realize. It's the month of Ramadan, the month of forgiveness, the month of mercy. Let us turn to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even by giving out charities. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, regarding those who give charities, سَيُدْخِلُهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ And this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah At-Tawbah, that Allah will include these people who give charities in His mercy. So don't we want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that it is our duty to go and look for the poor person. We must look for the right cause. It's not just that you give anyone and everyone your money and your zakat and your charities. No, look for those who are deserving. And sometimes it's a mission. Allah says, the poor people, the genuine people, at times you won't even be able to tell that they are poor. Allah says, the unsuspecting will actually think that they are rich because they don't ask anyone anything. They carry on and they try and make ends meet. They make dua to Allah. Allah says, go out and look for those type of people. You give out to them. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more conscious of how we give out our charities. Because one is to give it. But sometimes it's rejected because we gave it slap dash. We gave it slap dash without thinking where we've given it. Sometimes a year later we find out that that person actually stole the money and went away. And sometimes we find out that that person is a drunkard or a drug addict or into gambling. People come and ask us, you know, there's a man who lost his this and he lost his that in gambling. Am I allowed to give him zakat? Why do you want to use the purest of money for the worst of habits? Something that is haram to bail someone out from something totally haram. May Allah protect us. So if that's where Allah has decided that your zakat is going to go, what can I do? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. A man who's a drunkard does not deserve your zakat. Look for the best of people, the pious of people who deserve the zakat. And when you give it to them, it will be a means of them getting closer to the Creator. They will make dua for you, which is far more likely to be accepted than the drunkard whom others have given their zakat to. And this is something that is a valid point. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises it in this surah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that when someone owes you money, it is an act of charity if they cannot pay you back on time and they are genuine that you give them a little bit of time. Allah says that itself is a charity to give people time to pay you back. 
Now I'm not calling this evening on all those who owe people money to now delay and say, did you hear the talk? Or tomorrow morning you pick up a CD and you drop it at the people whom you owe money to. Highlight the second, that at this second you must listen to what is being said. You need to give me time. No, that's not what we are talking about. But the message is when genuinely there is someone who is suffering to make ends meet and they owe you a portion of money, it is an act of charity. It is an act of charity to give them some time. And this is why Allah says, If the person is finding it difficult and they are going through difficult times, give them some time. Up to a time when they are a little bit more at ease. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us respite and time and to make us from those who can seek forgiveness. Because obviously, as you do to others, so it shall be done unto you. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again in Surah Al Imran, what type of wealth should you spend? It's a very interesting question. Sometimes we have a business and we time to give zakat. We've calculated it fair enough. We've calculated it, that's fine. That's a topic on its own, how we calculated it. But we then take the stock that is about to expire and we quickly give it away. We take the stock that is rotten, something that is unacceptable and we want to give it away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and he says, don't give the worst of your wealth that if someone gave you that, you yourself wouldn't even accept it. If it is zakat, don't do that. Give out that which is good. Give out that which is decent, acceptable. The hadith says, neither should you give out the best, nor should you give out the worst. Give out the mediocre of your wealth. If you want to give the best out of your own goodness, then you will achieve righteousness. Because Allah says, you will never be able to achieve righteousness until you spend from that which you love the most. And whatever you spend, Allah knows it very well. So, when it comes to zakat, neither that which is the best nor that which is the worst, but that which is in the middle, that's the sunnah. And when it comes to excess charities, something that's not moving, something that's about to expire, you can give it away just as a charity, but not as zakat. There is a difference. This is just a voluntary charity because no one's going to make use of this. I need to give it away before it expires. It has a best before date. And I don't know if you noticed before they used to put expiry. Now, after you see expiry, you don't feel like having it. Nowadays, most of the products have a best before date. And that means it is not worst after, which means you can actually have it after that. Allahu Akbar. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection and understanding. I don't know, suddenly the water also has an expiry date. Is it because they want us to throw it away or what? Only Allah knows. We ask Allah to make us from those who can give others water as well. And who can quench the thirst of others in such a way that Allah will quench our thirst. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will meet our needs as well. So we have this wealth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. Also a very interesting point is sometimes when you love something too much, a little bit too much, and you find it is coming between you and your creator, give it away. Then you will achieve righteousness. For example, you've got a jacket and you love it so much. If your child put an oily hand on it, you gave the child a few claps and smacks because you love your jacket so much, even more than your own child. That is dangerous. Allah says, you want righteousness? Give that jacket away because you are allowing the love for your jacket to exceed the love you have for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's very dangerous. Like for example, you have uh, anything. You have a motor vehicle, one small scratch and your heart is so depressed, you can't sleep for three days. If that's the case, change your vehicle. Allahu Akbar. Because they say when you have a Mercedes Benz, with all due respect to those who do have a Mercedes Benz, when you have a Mercedes Benz, a minor scratch might cost you a hundred thousand rands to repay. Whereas when you've got a Toyota, they'll probably do it for you for free. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those who love our wealth so much that we become depressed when something goes wrong. It is Allah who is in charge. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how some people consider zakat as a fine. They think it is a big tax and they take it as a burden, like it's vat or sales tax. Allahu Akbar. Like Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ مَغْرَمَا There are some people, some of the Bedouins, and this message is for all of us, who consider what they are spending as a fine. When Allah says, spend this, they spend it, but they consider it as a fine. Now let me bring it to our context. When we are calculating zakat, let's never ever shortchange our own creator. We know it's 2.5% of a certain type of wealth. We must give 2.5% and always put the benefit where you are doubting. Give the benefit of the doubt to the poor person every single time. That which is better for the poor person, give it out. So for example, if you, I know in my case, I come from Zimbabwe where we deal in many currencies and sometimes people are calculating a cross rate. When it comes to Allah, use the best rate possible. Don't shortchange the people and say, no, 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 I'm going to use the lowest rate because ah, this is zakat, you know. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and may he grant us the knowledge that really there is a lot of barakah and blessings when you give more for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are calculating our zakat, people ask us, should I use the cost price or the selling price? The answer is neither the cost nor the selling, neither your cost nor, nor the selling price. It is the value of the goods on that day, also known as the replacement price. So say for example, you've got a lot of items in your business. You want to know, should I give zakat? Don't look at your cost because that might have gone up in value. So look at the value, the replacement value. Say for example, you've got, let me give you a good example. You've got a hacksaw, you've got 50 hacksaws and you purchase them at 20 rands and you are selling them at 50 rands. But now the market value is gone up to 40 rands. You can't continue using 20 rands. You must use 40. That's the market price of those items at that particular time. This is something we need to understand and realize. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. If we don't understand, we need to go and seek knowledge from the scholars of this particular deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that whoever can protect themselves from their own stinginess and from the miserliness of their own souls, they are the most successful. That verse is in Surah Al Hadid. Whoever can protect himself from the miserliness of his own soul is a successful person. Look at how Allah has worded it. That means if you can fight your own miserliness, now you are successful. We become miserly with time. We cannot give time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot give time to read salah. We cannot give time for fulfilling Allah's duty. How are we going to give our wealth? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يَبْخَلْ وَمَنْ يَبْخَلْ فَإِنَّمَا يَبْخَلُ عَنْ نَفْسِهِ From amongst you there are some who are very miserly and stingy. If that is the case, Allah is saying, Whoever is stingy shall only harm himself. وَاللَّهُ الْغَنِيُّ وَأَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُوا أَمْثَالَكُمْ Allah says, Allah is independent. He doesn't need our wealth. It is us who need the acceptance of Allah. He says, if you don't want to spend because of miserliness, I will change you and substitute you with others who will spend and they will not be like you. And this is why when we are spending, it is a favor that we are doing ourselves. We are not doing a favor to the poor person. When we give a poor person wealth, and I've mentioned this in one of my talks in the previous days, let's not think that, yes, yes, I've given this man wealth. No, I'm doing good to him. 
Wallahi, we need to thank Allah that He has put someone in front of us to accept that wealth from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of acceptance. And this is why Allah tells us in the Quran, spend your wealth before you regret. Before a day comes when you won't have that wealth anymore with you to spend it and that is the day of Qiyamah. A person dies leaving behind a million, two million, five million and many trillions. What will happen when they die? Will that money come with them into the grave? No, it won't. It is reported by the Chinese that there is an old folk joke about the Chinese that when they used to die because they wanted everything that they had earned to go with them, no one else must benefit from it. I don't know if it's true or not. It's just on a lighter note. So they say they used to put all their wealth inside, all the money in the grave as well with the person, subhanallah. And the money used to go in as well until the bright spark came. And he said, look guys, you know what? Give me all the money, I'll give you a check. Put the check in there. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those who are miserly. The reason I'm giving you this example is to show you that when it comes to money, we are quick to think. We are fast. We'll make any plan. Why can't we make a plan when it comes to closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When it comes to reciting the Quran, how much Quran did you recite today? That's a question. How much did I recite today? That's a question. Wallahi, I'd like to let you know that if we have not recited as much as we are supposed to do, it is our duty that in the same way we are witty to think of how to make money, we should be witty of how to make time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us again that don't find yourself dying without having spent. And this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in many different places in the Quran, in different wordings. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just before Ayatul Kursi, Allah says, spend from the wealth we've given you. Before a day will come, when no deals will help anyone. Your spending on that day don't help. No friendship will help. No connections and contacts will help. Nothing will help. No intercession will help unless Allah has permitted it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of protection. Then Allah is warning us about our own wealth. And He says, when I've given you wealth, don't think that, oh, this is mine. Remember where it came from and only spend on that which is beneficial for you. And the Quran specifically says, don't ever spend your wealth on that which is destructive. You want to buy things which are going to destroy your health, things which are going to destroy you, which will harm you with your own hands you're going to buy. Allah says no. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah. Spend your wealth in the path of Allah, in the right cause, in the happiness of Allah. And never ever throw yourselves into destruction with the doing of your own hands. And this is why it is important and I'd like to mention this. We know we speak about drugs, we speak about alcohol, we speak about gambling, we speak about adultery, we speak about so many sins. But something that we need to take heed is the habit of smoking. Those who are smoking, you need to cut it down. It's a waste of money, to be honest with you. You need to try and eradicate it, get rid of it. And those who have not smoked, believe me, it is prohibited for you to even try it. Because naturally there is a destruction. The boxes that are sold, it's written there. It says smoking is hazardous to the health. Smoking kills. Two words, I've read it on one of the boxes. Sometimes they write it in small writing because they still want to sell it to you. But it's there. How can we think that it's good for us? And I'm sure everyone who smokes knows that it's a bad habit. They want to kick the habit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all in this month of Ramadan an opportunity to kick our bad habits. Believe me, it is something that is serious and we as Muslims should be the furthest away from it. I feel very, very sorry for those who are actually addicted and those who cannot leave the cigarette because definitely I know the pain that they are going through. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to give zakat and the fact that the zakat is not only on your wealth, but even on produce if you are a farmer. And Allah says, 
كُلُوا مِنْ ثَمَرِهِ إِذَا أَثْمَرَ وَآتُوا حَقَّهُ يَوْمَ حَصَادِهِ With the day you harvest as a farmer, you need to give out the zakat of your produce. Now I'd like to mention here that zakat is not always 2.5%. For me and you, the general layman who's not a farmer or a miner, it is 2.5%. And after one year passes. But for a farmer or a miner, it is not 2.5%. It is not even as the year passes. The day you harvest, that is the day that you must give out 5% of your harvest if that produce was irrigated by your own pipes. You must give out 5% of it the day, you har the day you harvest it. And if it was irrigated by natural means without your pipes, then you must give out 10% of your produce, your entire produce on that day. That is the ruling. I'm sure a lot of us don't know it because we are not farmers. And those who are miners, we need to go to the ulama and learn about zakat before we even start mining. May Allah protect us. Because when you extract it, you need to give 20% for Allah. Subhanallah. 20% because you got it for free. Allah put it in the ground. You took it out. Allah says we want 20% of that before you move forward. So 20% on, on the day of extraction. After that, if the year passes, then it's 2.5% on the value. So I hope you understand the difference. One is on the day of extraction, the right that you owe Allah from that is 20%. And thereafter, if the year has lapsed and you are still holding that same, uh, the same amount that you have extracted more than a year back, you give 2.5% of it because now it is wealth that was collected. That is, if it falls within the bracket of zakat. So that is a very interesting ruling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran as well. Also mentioned in the Quran, and I will not go into it in detail, the various categories of the people whom, uh, who are legible for zakat, who can take zakat, who are recipients of zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of them, the poor person, the one who doesn't have anything, the one who has very little, and so on, the wayfarer, and what have you. There is a long list of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance whenever we spend our wealth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something extremely, extremely important. He says, don't ever make a mockery of a small amount that some give as charity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses those who did that in the past. الَّذِينَ يَلْمِزُونَ الْمُطَّوِّعِينَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي الصَّدَقَاتِ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَجِدُونَ إِلَّا جُهْدَهُمْ فَيَسْخَرُونَ مِنْهُمْ سَخِرَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah says there are some who make a mockery of the charities that others come and give because they are small charities. Allah says Allah will make a mockery of them very soon. May Allah protect us. So if your charity and your zakat is a thousand rands, someone comes with five rands. Alhamdulillah, no laughing at it. That is a charity, that is their zakat. They are fulfilling a duty and a right. They will also earn the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a very important point that we all need to remember that the charities, no matter how small they are, in the eyes of Allah, they are charities. Then another point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us all and the lesson is for the people who are recipients of zakat. Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَلْمِزُكَ فِي الصَّدَقَاتِ فَإِنْ أُعْطُوا مِنْهَا رَضُوا وَإِنْ لَمْ يُعْطَوْ مِنْهَا إِذَا هُمْ يَسْخَطُونَ There are some people, they are such that when you give them charities, they are happy. And when you don't, they are sad. They don't want to talk to you. Allahu Akbar. It happens sometimes. People give us an amount, we are happy. They are our friends. And they don't give us an amount, we don't want to look at them, we don't want to talk to them. We want to say, no, this person is bad, only because they didn't give you. When someone does not give you a charity, they are not bad. They are still the same people that you know. And this is why it is important that we realize our love for people must not be based on how much money they got or how much money they've given us or how much they've not given us. You base it on merit, exactly what type of a person he is and character and conduct and iman and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about a different type of a charity and that is the udhiyah. We call it sometimes the qurbani. 
the slaughter, the sacrificial animal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it here. Look at the angles of charity mentioned in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ That is one type of a charity where you are allowed to eat from it as well. And you must also feed the poor person. It is a time of enjoyment and it is a time of feasting. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of that. And he tells us very clearly that he does not receive any of the meat. Allah doesn't get the blood or the meat. He gets the piety from it. He will reward you upon piety. What gets to Allah is the piety from you, not the meat nor the blood. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who have that piety so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it from us. And the final point we will end with this evening, inshallah, is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared destruction upon the one who is supposed to be giving charities and does not give charity. So a person who has wealth, they are supposed to be giving zakat. They have not been giving zakat. They'd better calculate it before the destruction that Allah has declared against them overtakes them. It is important we calculate our charities and give it out. If you've missed a few years, believe me, it is time to calculate that amount and give it before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise of destruction overtakes us. In Surah Fussilat, Allah says destruction upon those who associate gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not give their zakat, destruction be upon them. May Allah protect us all. And then also on the same subject, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that those who want to keep their gold and silver as a treasure and they don't want to give it zakat, Allah says on the day of qiyamah, that gold and that silver will be molten and it will be wiped on the foreheads of these people as molten gold and silver. It will burn their foreheads. And this verse is so serious. It describes how that will happen on the day of qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah says on that day, they shall be made on their foreheads to be grounded on the fire of Jahannam with this molten gold and silver being wiped on them, being uh, meaning making scars on them. And Allah says, it will be told to them, taste your treasure. This is the treasure that you had amassed for yourself and you didn't spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of zakat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever punish us in that way, neither in the dunya nor in the akhirah. May he accept us all on this eve and may he grant us inshallah every form of barakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our homes with nur and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our communities with happiness and with love. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of Jannah for every single one of us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.